Hey guys, what's going on? It's Spicy Weekly. What time oh. is it? Sounded a bit like the rock band. <clears throat> Another delicious intro to Massive Joe's Weekly Word, episode 100. And 58 Nevos. Exactly. And mate, if that intro is anything to go by, I am super fucking excited at the moment. I need to put a little picture on my ground. You guys will find out why in a quick second. Topics of discussion. So we have back in stock, new products coming soon. What's up? Suff Wars, annual warehouse sale, ask Neve. Jam-packed episode of Massive Joe's a weekly word for you guys this week. Let's get straight into a big Neve. First topic of discussion, Neve. All right, back in stock. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. It's not looking too bad at the moment. Now she's gonna fuck with my crew. Yeah, I need to see Rob Logan. It's just, a, you know, I was saying to you, you and Bosch yesterday, actually. I said, because I haven't had hair, like, overall this short for mm. a long time. Yeah. And I was like, there's an inverse relationship between how short your hair is and how long you can leave it before you get a haircut. Mm. Like, I have to get this shit cut every fucking two weeks. Yeah. Back when it was longer, I could leave it like a month. Well, you Just you hide the shit. Well, that's like I was saying with shaved head. Well, that, that's what I mean. You shaved head is like every week. Yeah. It's not the good. shorter the hair, actually, the more high maintenance. Except the beard. The beard just keeps growing. The beard is looking very anabolic at the moment. Anyway, I've got to go see Rob. Hopefully, I can get him tomorrow. The thing was, you should have come last Saturday to the Hit Center Open Day because Rob was there cutting hair. Well, yeah, but I wasn't. It was funny because Rob um, obviously cut a couple of the guys' hair that were there for the for the hit center, but he got all his um, regulars to come Mm. and say like, "I'm not cutting at the shop today. Come down to the hit center." Yeah, and he cut like four guys' hair. You know, he says like, "That was great because I got all my my the regulars regulars out of the way as well." Beautiful. Maybe we should just set Rob up here and say, "Yeah, do it." First topic of discussion. So back in stock. Yep. All right. First one: EHP Lab Oxy Shred. All flavors back in stock in all, uh, well, all the usual flavors, the six, yeah, the six, six usual flavors of Oxytrade. No limited editions at the moment. <coughs> well, not yet. When's uh, Oxytrade Hardcore? Is that in it's yet? Not even, mate, it's not even coming soon yet. Well, it should be. It's that far away? No, it's not. Yeah, it is. In July or some shit. No, it's no. We placed an order for it last week. Oh, really? Well, maybe put that on the coming soon. Then. I actually have to find out when it's coming, but it's it's been ordered. Okay. So yeah, I think it should be like. In a week or two. There you go. Um, SciTech Way, all sizes, all flavours. All sizes, all flavours. SciTech Way professional back in stock. Rule one, R1 isolate, all sizes, all flavours. And also? Blend, all sizes, all flavours. All uh, the super popular Rule one proteins back in stock. All sizes, all flavours, everything. Everything Rule one. And finally, after a six month hiatus, even longer. What time? So it's Utopia back in three flavors. It's Utopia time, baby. Strawberry kiwi. That was really shit. Strawberry kiwi. Reveal again. There we go. Okay, hit it. Peach mango. Uh, strawberry kiwi and pineapple coconut. I haven't back. tried. Pi- have you tried pineapple coconut? Yeah, before? man, that was my favorite fucking flavor until they like discontinued it. Now they brought it back. Pineapple coconut is the fucking tits. The tits. It's pina colada. Oh look, this is what it is. Guess who wants to order some? Yeah, yeah, look at that, straight up. Utopia, back in stock. Neve, just real quick, man, just just play along with me, man. What time is it? Am I meant to get angry like I used to? No, you're supposed to say it's Utopia time, Oh, Utopia time, time, baby. It's Utopia time, baby. Back in stock, in the three flavors. Next topic of discussion, Neve. Uh, New products. Hit him, man. So ATP Science No Way Bars. Yep. And Novo Utopia Tropical Punch. New flavor, where is it? Here. New flavor of Utopia as well. So, th- so that means we have actual four. Why can't I get some zoom and focus action? Fuck's sake. On the mental focus up. There we go. Uh, we now have four flavors of Utopia with the Tropical Punch, the Peach Mango, which is the OG, the Strawberry Kiwi, and the pineapple coconut, four flavors, all in stock. Go fucking nuts, guys. Yep. It's been a long time coming. Next topic of discussion, Nee. So we've got the TMJ Apparel. Uh, What's the topic? Coming soon. Yeah, coming yeah. soon. Yep. Uh, as I said, Oxy Shred Hardcore mm-hmm. in the grape flavor will be in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, TM, TMJ Apparel, TMJ Raid. TMJ Raid training towels. Training towels. Uh, MJ Microscales. Yep. MJ Fillingo Funnels. Yep. MJ Body Tape Measures. Yep. 
Are they available as a gift with gift purchase. with purchase currently? Yes. So yes. if you spend 150 bucks, yep. in store uh, or online. Yeah, not the scales, but the fill and go funnels and the body tape measures. Yep. Uh, and and the shakers, blenders, uh, blender bottles are back in stock as well. Ooh, yeah. In the 700 mil and the one liter shakers. Yep. So the 700 mil, the body tape measures, and the fill and go funnels are all available as a gift with purchase for orders over $150 on top of your free shipping as well. Yeah, on top of your loyalty points. Yeah. We give a lot. <coughs> we give a lot. Well, free shipping's 100 bucks now, isn't it? So, yeah. but 150 you get that your free gift, so. Crazy, crazy. Can I just quickly say, it's not 149.95, can I get my free gift? It's 150 and above. It's so. 150, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's automatic, so it's not even something that's. There's no discretion. No, there's no discretion. Computer says no. It's not like the, uh, it's not like the, the uh, election where you just decide where you want them to go afterwards, you know? I'm struggling to make the connection on that one. Because be you can place your votes and then like they yes. don't really care, it doesn't really matter, you can still put your votes wherever they want, they just rig yeah. it. You can't rig this one, mate. It's unriggable. <laughs> <laughs> it's rock solid. I was trying to seem learned, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. I'm not fucking listing this one. No, don't. I'm not saying Okay, it. jump over it. TMJ okay. Apparel 940 A-frame new colors. Your show. Next week. Do what the fuck you want. Next week. Yep. And Team J Power Arm Blasters, hopefully next week. Next topic of discussion, Nee. What's up? Oh, oh. You wanna go first or you want me to go first? Uh, you go first. Because you know what I'm gonna say, straight up. I've been waiting for this shit to come back in stock for a fucking more than six months, to be honest, man. More than six months. Of course, my what's up for this week is De Novo Nutrition Utopia. It's coming straight back into my daily supplementation regime. I'm having it every fucking day, 2 p.m. What time is it? 2 p.m. It's now. Utopia time, baby. But because we're in here shooting weekly word a little bit earlier than 2 p.m., of course, it's Utopia time, baby. Um, my sup of the week. I don't know if, if you can tell, but I'm pretty fucking excited about Utopia being back in stock. I, might have I haven't been this excited about a sup being back in stock for a long fucking time. Mm. Um, I'm that excited. My sup I may Shut buy the fuck up! <laughs> my sup of the week is... Um, <coughs> I have stopped having my fat burner in the morning. Yeah. Because what I was doing is I was having a double scoop as soon as I woke up. Yeah. So I was having my drop factor, or drop factor or core burn, whatever I had, double scoop can as I, I was walking out I the make, door. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Have a scoop of Utopia instead. Okay. First thing I'll get the there. The, so the thing is, is I was having that, and then obviously, like, I, I'd start riding the wave too early. Yeah. And like, so I'd have that at like, say, seven or eight a.m. Yeah. And then by eleven, I was having another one, and then by two, I was having another one, and then pre-workout, and that was when the gram was happening. Uh. Normally, I don't mind a gram, but it was yeah. caffeine. It's not that great because your body feels like shit. Yeah. So the thing is, is I've stopped doing that, and now in the afternoon, I've been waiting till sort of you about your pick me up time, one yeah. or two o'clock. Yeah. And I've started having my America energy again. Oh, you're going back to the red, white, and boom. So I, I was. I did notice that yesterday, actually. Yeah. So you bust open a can. So yeah, instead of just like having the the fat burners and stuff I was having, I've yeah. been waiting throughout the day and waiting just till about two o'clock, not having any caffeine until about two o'clock, mm. but having a red, white, and boom because mm. it's got the choline. The choline. In you, know, you know what else has the choline? What? Utopia. Yep. This is my also sup of the week. The but it's delicious. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom flavor is delicious. Five flavors. Get on it. You can buy the cases online. You can buy mixed cases okay. online. Mixed cases, mixed and flavors. So um, yeah, uh, America Get Energy. Yourself. America Energy, definitely my sup of the week. Next topic of discussion, me. Sup Wars. Sup Wars is back, baby. A couple of episodes just dropped in the last couple of weeks for those of you who are unaware. Uh, very cool episodes because the first one was on two of our most popular fat burners at the moment, Hydra Shred up against Ghost Burn. Mm. And then the one that just dropped uh, literally yesterday, depending on this, no, yeah, it would be yes by the time this goes live, it'll be yesterday. Uh, our two top selling pre-workouts at the moment, Core Fury X up against Force Element Warning Order. Mm -hmm. And they are fucking epic episodes. Yeah. I think Sup Wars is just like, I think it's like our number one series right now. I go, like, I feel bad after it sometimes, though. Why? Because, like, I argue and I say, like, to, like Dan from Ghost that, like, the, yeah. it, these flavors are a bit unoriginal. Yeah. And I kind of feel bad after. And then he hits you up and he says, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. Listen, man, it's nothing personal. Yeah. It's just, you know, we're doing what we have to do to try and win. <laughs> that's, a, that's all there is. But, yeah. I felt bad about what I had to say about warning order. Yeah. But it's the truth. 
So anyway, I don't want to offend anyone. I I'm think trying to win. I think Morning Order and Fury was probably the best one we've done thus far. I think so as well. If you haven't watched it, definitely after this video, or oh, fuck it, just pause this video, go watch that, and then come back because it's short. They're like twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah no bullshit. Anyway, Zap Pause is back. Make sure you subscribe to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel. Get your <coughs> notifications when those videos go live and check them all out. Yeah. Next topic of discussion, Nee. Annual warehouse sale. Here we go, baby. So, Saturday, June 22nd, yep. which is uh, two weekends away. Yep. So, not this weekend, not the one after. Two weekends away. Three exactly. weekends away. So, yep. um, yeah. Annual warehouse sale. Uh, it's pretty much this year. We, I uh, think it, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pause you for a second because I just want Dillop to cut in the highlight clip from last year yeah. of the warehouse and your warehouse. I'll do that right. It's always an awesome day. It's the, a the, the, fucking the, epic day. Man. Probably the best thing about it is the yep. clearance items. Yeah. And just the deals we do on that day. They're ridiculous. Which They're is not like, you know, 10% off, 20% off, 30%. They're like fucking like, last year we had shit that was like 80% off. Yeah. It was, it was ridiculous. And we had, how many people you reckon we had in that line before we opened the doors? Because I went all the way through the car park out onto Furness Avenue and ha fucking halfway down Furness would've Avenue. Been a, would've been a couple hundred. I reckon it was easy a couple hundred in the line before we even opened the doors. Mm. There were people, we, so we started last year at 10 a.m. There were mm. people here at 7 a.m. lining yeah. up. That's how good the fucking warehouse sale is. It was crazy. It's ridiculous. So yeah, so uh, June 22nd, 10 to 4. Let's be honest, if you come after 11, <laughs> Most of the, Most of the gone. subs gonna be, is going to be gone. But we do also, so we do we do a, a few things on the annual warehouse sale. We do obviously a massive supplement clearance, which is uh, discontinued supplements, scratch and dent type stuff, stuff that's maybe got a short expiry date on it, or things that we just don't carry anymore and we just want to clear out. Yeah. We also then do uh, an apparel clearance as well, similar, mostly with the power as discontinued pieces that we're just not gonna run anymore. Um, we also then have a massive inventory of supplement branded apparel um, that we offer at ridiculous prices. So, you know, um, t-shirts from different supplement brands, not TMJ apparel, effectively, no. like different merchandise from different supplement brands. We then have a cut your own tank and crop t-shirt station. So if you pick up any pieces of apparel and you want to customize them a little bit, you can do that. Mm -hmm. We have supplement sampling. Of course, we also have all of our usual monthly specials and you can pick up any stuff that you want that's perhaps not on clearance, but you want to take advantage of a monthly special or restock what you need to restock. You can do that as well. A whole heap of shit, man. Yeah. A whole heap of shit. It's a great fucking day. Mm -hmm. I love it. Every day. Awesome. One of my favorite days. Yep. Anyway, so don't miss it, guys. June 22, Saturday, June 22, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Throw up the, uh, the advertising piece right now so that the guys can check out all of the details. Do not miss it. Make sure you're here early and take advantage of all of the crazy, crazy deals. It's once a year, man. That's yep. why it's called the annual warehouse sale. And we're not here to fuck spiders. Definitely not. Next topic of discussion, Nee. Ask Neve. Woo! Let's go, baby. How many questions we got to ask Neve this week? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions. <coughs> ask Neve. Still got this fucking cough. Cold Adelaide winter, man. Cold Adelaide air. Got me good. Got mm -hmm. me real fucking good. Alan Kim. Hey, fellas. Alan from the six in Toronto, Canada. Thank you for answering my cancer run question last week. Continuing on that question. On days when I run for 10 plus kilometers in my training, what would you look for in a pre-workout opposed to what I use on my heavy lifting days? Um, pretty much 
the things you want to be looking for is obviously things that are going to help more with your running. Yeah. Um, so stuff with like a full clinical dose of beta alanine to fight the lactic. Anti fatigue. Anti fatigue. Yeah. So like your beta alanine, your taurine. Yeah. Um, those kind of things are more for muscular endurance mm -hmm. and obviously your caffeine. Mm -hmm. um, I mean that's the thing is things like um, creatine is uh, probably things you don't really want to be looking. Uh, yeah, creatine you don't really look for because it's, it's not going to benefit a runner. Mm. Um, stuff like your your muscle pump products, mm. um, your Vaso Six, mm. Agmatine are probably things that. I mean, I, I don't know. I disagree with that, man, because uh, I think the right. added nutrient delivery does almost help with the anti fatigue because it removes fatigue toxins from working muscles. Yeah. So I think there's probably benefit in that. Just off the top of my head, I would be thinking, you know, something probably like Peak X. Yeah. You know, no caffeine at all. Yeah. Just the anti fatigue type ingredients. The thing with 10Ks as well is depending on how. I don't That's really like know an hour? How long it takes you, yeah, about an, an hour. hour. So I mean. Yeah. Depending on how long you run last as well, is you don't really want to be like dying off and the caffeine mm -hmm. sort of like crashing it at the end either. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've never thought it's good to have real high doses of caffeine before any kind of performance sports. Mm. Like, I, I just don't like it. I agree. Um, I think maybe like 100 milligrams of caffeine is fine. Mm. So, like your cup of coffee or your Red Bull, mm. Monster, American mm. Energy, those kind of things. O obviously, you don't want to be having carbonated drinks, though. Mm. But that kind of amount of caffeine, I think, for me personally, whenever I've done anything, is beneficial. Could be ideal. But um, maybe even something like even um, like A B C D. I was going to say one scoop of warning water. Yeah, warning might water be, might be something good. A B C D. Yeah, that's another option. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't really have the anti fatigue in there. Mm. That's the only thing. A B C D. Yeah. Chuck some beta alanine in there. Yeah, beta pure. Stack that shit. Ryan Tom Chuck, brothers in iron. It's Ryan from Calgary in Canada. Back to back Canadians. Mm. I follow TMJ extended hypertrophy when performing exercises. I've recently started feeling shoulder pain after about three sets of dumbbell shoulder press. I do a rather thorough warm up, which is why I'm confused. Any tips to help with it? Thanks for all the content. Stay massive. You um, know how I feel about shoulder press. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Shul Fuck it. You, you want to tell the story about Big Swole? How he tore a rotator cuff, yeah. shoulder pressing, first thing in the morning in Sydney. Yeah, Joel and I, when we were training yeah. at City Gym Sydney, yeah. so shout out to Andy, who owns City Gym Sydney. Yeah. Uh, City Gym Sydney, we were there training. Good, good people down there, man. Um, using the hammer strength shoulder press, yep. and uh, yeah, on, on one of his sets, bang, tore his rotator cuff, and now Ooh. he's had surgery, now he's out for three to six months of recovery. Yep. So. Fuck shoulder press. Look, the thing, I, just I, think, like, I just don't think I think it's a fucking unnecessary exercise if you're the sort of person who trains chest. If yeah. you train chest, I don't think that you need to directly target front delts. I just fucking don't. Have you ever seen someone who trains chest mm. who has underdeveloped front delts? No. The thing that with, with, with pressing is that you're putting, you, your shoulder is very temperamental. Mm -hmm. Is that a good word for it? Mm -hmm. Temperamental. Mm -hmm. So if you're not putting your shoulder in the right position, yep. you can do all sorts of damage. It's very fragile. Especially the shoulder, shoulder socket is yeah. the, the most complicated socket in the human body. Very fragile. Lo obviously, so many fucking different degrees of motion. And if you just get it millimeters wrong, you're fucked. Especially under load when you're doing something like a dumbbell shoulder press. The something for a dumbbell shoulder press that I find personally that gives me uh, not really too much trouble is yeah. more of like, obviously people staying in shoulder press like this, yeah. is coming forwards with a more neutral grip. Mm. So coming more, that's more taking front delt into it. Yeah. That's sort of what I find even doing like standing shoulder press with more like driving my elbows in mm. and pressing up mm. is where I probably don't get any sort of pain yeah. with shoulders. Yeah. It's when you start doing like the behind the neck shit. Mm. I can do behind the neck, but it has to be very lightweight. Think about the, think about the position that actually yeah. puts the shoulder joint. In. When I see people doing when like... You're comp when you're compressing everything like that, purposely mm. compressing and then putting it under load. Yeah. I think that's probably the number one dumb fuck exercise in the gym. When I see like There's someone a few, but that's probably doing behind the neck shoulder press for like 100 kilos, Oof. and I've seen it, it, it just it makes me cringe because I'm just thinking what's going on with that shoulder. It's just unnecessary. Because your shoulder's there, not, it's most people's shoulder, like my shoulder can't even get back in that position right no. now. No. Stupidity. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan. So yeah. my, I mean, my advice would be not to do dumbbell shoulder press. Yeah. 
do other things that target front delt, do front raises, do fuck, so many things hit front delt. Even if you think it's not direct, your front, even most people, most people when they do lateral raises, yeah. because their wrists come above their elbows and they swing and lean back and shit, it actually becomes a front delt fucking movement. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Which is why you see so many people who have completely underdeveloped middle delts and completely over dominant front delts. Mm. Very, very rare. I don't think I've ever seen someone where I'm like, bro, you probably need to just bump back the middle delt work and mm. increase the front. I've never said that to anyone. Yeah. Never. Not even girls who mm. don't train chest. I think there's a lot, and as Joe said earlier, um, a lot of things like like your heavy bench is going to bring a lot of shoulder in. Yeah. Like heavy dips is going to bring along your front delt in. Bicep curls. Yeah. Fucking tricep push. Your, your front delts get used so much. I have the problem of trying to take my front delts out of everything. Me too. So. 100%. Mm. So, Spencer Thomas. Hey, fellas. Spencer Thomas from Linelli, South Wales in the UK. Thank you for the much love content you guys post on a weekly basis. More people in the fitness industry need to take tips. I ain't going to name drop as you guys are probably aware of it, but what's your personal opinions on the many fitness YouTube role models coming out lately saying what steroids they take and how much? Do you think this is a good or a bad thing? Um, I am split 50-50 here, and probably Joe's going to have a good comment on this that may make me change my my mindset either way. Possibly. But I think I'm going to give you both sides of my argument, just yeah. the first things that pop into my head. Okay. Let's the good it. thing is, is giving uh, your followers just a clear indication of perhaps what uh, thinking, especially if they're, if they're pushing a certain supplement or doing something, yeah. it's going to give them a clear indication of, all right, maybe this person looks that way because of the supplements they take, mm -hmm. the performance enhancing supplements they take. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't walk around all year at 7% um, and, and 240 pounds mm -hmm. and, and just be shredded and, and just pretend it's natural and, and that's what it is, just not, not natural. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it also almost takes out that, um, just oh, that reality mm -hmm. of, of what's actually going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. B, I think, is a bad thing, mm -hmm. and I uh, probably more sway towards B being mm -hmm. a bad thing, mm -hmm. because if you look up to someone and they're taking steroids, mm -hmm. and then you're giving them exactly dosages of what you're taking, mm -hmm. without, and then if somebody like an 18-year-old kid sees that or a 20-year-old kid sees that, mm -hmm. and they've just started at the gym and think, oh, my idol X over here mm -hmm. takes this, 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 mm -hmm. and then they go and go get off their mate, and it's shit quality. It's just olive oil mm -hmm. and they haven't got their bloods done or they haven't mm -hmm. seen a doctor and they don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to um, PCT, they don't know how to run a cycle, they don't know how yeah. what to do if side effects come up. Yeah. How long do I run it for? And they just start doing it. It's like a, it's a bad analogy, but it's like watching brain a brain surgery on ER on TV and mm -hmm. thinking you're a brain surgeon straight mm -hmm. away. Like mm -hmm. It's not something that you should just see what. And, and the thing is, is most of these people on fitness on, on YouTube channels or, or the fitness idols, probably don't really know what they're doing either. Most of them don't know. Most of them don't know what they're doing. This is the problem. So you're giving advice, which is not just saying take creatine and increase strength. You're actually fucking people's bodies up. Yeah. I've never heard of anyone, maybe one case in a million, I haven't actually heard of any of like, say like creatine mm. causing massive issues by taking five grams of creatine a day. Mm. I haven't heard of any adverse really health effects mm -hmm. from that. But mm. the thing is, is steroids do fuck people up. Mm. And if you're not aware of what's happening, you're not taking care of your blood pressure, not taking care of your liver, your enzymes, yeah. your heart, those kind of things, yeah. it, it is actually life and death. So, this and this is my concern, and that's probably my why I say lean yeah. more towards B, yeah. because obviously A, yeah, I don't, I don't like when people, I don't like when people claim natty mm -hmm. when they don't take stuff, when they do take stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're taking stuff, don't say you're natural. You don't need to go out there and label what you're taking, but I don't exactly. think it's right that you're saying you're a natural lifter if you're not natural. So I think that's more yep. point A that I like to point out. Correct, and, B, I, 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 and I agree with that. And B yep. is, I don't like people giving out supplement advice, or, or sorry, steroid advice or steroid cycles because mm. too many young, impressionable men and women, mm. or boys and girls, are mm. gonna go out there and do it without actually knowing what they're doing. Correct. This is my problem. Right, I, I, well, I am all for people being honest about performance enhancing drug use to the point where they say, I use performance enhancing drugs. Just so you know, 
this physique that you are aspiring to or you look up to or so on and so forth is an enhanced physique. And I think that's where it needs to stop. That was, that was what I meant by point A, yeah. Because the problem with going into detail is exactly as you have mentioned. But more importantly, the problem with going into that detail, let's just, let's just put on the table, first and foremost, that in most countries around the world, anabolic steroids, performance enhancing drugs are prescription only drugs. Really, so yeah. if you use them and you don't have a prescription, you are committing a criminal offense. Let's just, that, that's first and foremost. Right, so let's just put that on the table because that's probably, you know, you can't even really go past that, but we will go past it for the benefit of you guys watching this video. That's the first point. The second point is the reason why these are prescription only drugs is because you need to be seeking professional medical guidance and advice if you are choosing to use them. We both know, because we know a lot of people who use these things, who don't even get blood tests done. No. They don't even know what the fuck is happening to their hormone production, their cholesterol levels, their cardiovascular health, all of this shit. They don't fucking know because they don't have medical guidance and medical supervision taking a prescription only drug, mm. right? If you're taking a prescription, think about it not in the, in the, in the realm of anabolic steroids, think about it in the realm of uh, blood pressure medication. Hmm. Think of it in the realm of, um, what's another, uh, painkillers after surgery. Think of it in the realm of any other prescription drug that is prescription only <coughs> is always under the guidance of a medical professional. Hmm. Has to be, because the risk of abuse is too high. The side effects for using it for a prolonged period of time without knowing what the fuck is going on, the risk of causing long-term damage is too high. And performance enhancing, enhancing drugs and steroids and hormones and all that shit falls under that category 100%. So I think that's the risk for people coming out and saying, I take performance enhancing drugs, this is an enhanced physique, this is exactly what I take. Yeah. Because then it kind of opens up and says, well, if they're talking that openly about it, perhaps it's really not as dangerous as people think it is. Mm. Perhaps the side effects are not really what people say they are. Perhaps it's not illegal. Perhaps, you know, it, it kind of almost, by the fact of them talking about it so openly, it almost changes the perception in the people receiving that information and thinking that, you know, this is not that big a deal. Do you know what's very funny? But as it well? is a fucking big deal. And the one thing, you know, the, the one thing that scares me probably the most, man, is not even the physical effects, it's the psychological effects. Yeah. Nobody talks, probably the only person that's spoken about the psychological effects is Seth, yeah. Seth Ferrosi. You know, mm -hmm. whenever he talks about what he's taken in the past, what he takes at the moment, he always leads off with the best time to take steroids is never. Yeah. That's like his default position, mm -hmm. like don't fucking do it. Um, and he talks a lot about the psychological effects, but a lot of people, and you know, we really don't really know. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we know what the physical side effects are, you know, the effects on cholesterol and cardiovascular health and all that shit. But the psychological effects, I think that, you know, we're still learning a lot about that. It's hard some guys you speak to and they're like, oh, I can't take a certain type of steroid because they just fucking want to punch everyone mm. or they just get real angry and like if or that's anxiety what anxiety or depression yeah. or all that but especially just shit. like if it makes you really angry and like oh my yeah. girlfriend doesn't like me taking this compound mm. because it makes me so angry it's mm. like fuck man like maybe you just need to fucking think twice about it and like yeah if it's fucking you up that much and then ruining relationships is it really worth it ruining your job those kind of things yeah like imagine if I was here fucking but screaming at you every day. But this is the problem, right? Is is they get fucking romanticized because these people <coughs> have amazing physiques on YouTube and they got this massive following, and so they tell people, look, this is what I did to build this physique and you know get this massive following and so on and so forth, and life is all fucking sunshine and rainbows, but you're not actually addressing the risks. No one talks about the risks. No one talks about this shit will fuck you up. That's the thing, like forever. Not for a short period of time. Forever. When the guys that you see at the gym though, and they're just covered in fucking back knee. Yeah. It's like, your body is not fucking enjoying that. Yeah. 
Your body's not liking what eyes. you're taking. We saw, we saw one of the men's physique. Yeah, yellow, from yellow here. eyes. And he had fucking yellow around. I'm like, dude, whatever you're taking, your, your, liver and kidneys your are body is up. toxic. Like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? The funny thing is, as well is I have seen some people come out and say, all right, this is what I take. Mm. And they've answered, I'm going to answer questions about drugs on my Instagram. Yeah. And they start answering questions. And I'm like, mate, I'll be honest here. I've spoken to you about this shit at fucking Arnold Classic. Mm. Or you've spoken to me about this. Mm. That's not what you actually take. Mm. Don't come out and look like you're a fucking god or hero or whatever mm. you're trying to achieve by giving your cycle. Mm. When you're not actually giving your cycle, mm. be honest. If you're going to be honest, be honest. Mm. It's another annoying factor. Yeah. It's, oh, it, no, I, yeah. Just take, I just take TRT doses. Yeah, bullshit. No, you don't. Let's move on. <laughs> Gums 13. <clears throat> oh, we've missed the first part of this. Anyway, this is Stu. From Ebbvale. From Ebbvale. Ebbvale in the UK. My question this week is I'm just about to start a cut and start tracking my calories again, but I'm not sure how high to start them on. My Fitbit says I burn an average of 4,000 calories a day. I have a very active job. I own a construction company. So I was thinking of starting on around 3,500 a day. What would you advise to start on? I'm 5'9", 205 pounds. Thanks in advance. Stay massive. What I'd, kind of, what I'd do is I'd get my fitness power or whatever yep. your, what your app of choice or program of choice. Calorie King is also very good. My yep. fitness power. My fitness power is easy because it's on the phone. Yep. You can just generally scan the foods you have on a barcode. Yep. Is track what you're having for a few days, mm -hmm. three to five days, yep. let's say. If yep. you're eating the same thing every day, it makes it very easy. But mm -hmm. if you're having a, a, your different foods here and there, track it for five to seven days and find out what your average calories are yep. per day. Yep. Or find out what your average day's calories are. Yep. That's your starting point. Mm -hmm. Don't go off of what your watch says mm -hmm. because a lot of times I think it's bullshit. bullshit. So go off what you're having. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you've been sitting at um, I'm not sure how much. Do you know what you should do with way? He says 205 pounds. Oh, sorry, 205 right pounds. Sorry. Like 90 kegs. Yeah, no, so if you're sitting at 90 kegs and you've been sitting at 90 kegs for the last six, four to six weeks mm. and you've been eating the same diet, you yeah. know that's your maintenance calories. Yeah. You don't need a, you don't need a, a, a watch to tell you what it is. You, you know mm. what your maintenance calories are already. Mm -hmm. You just have to add it into my fitness power mm -hmm. and work out what it is. And go 10% below yeah. to start a cut. So go 10% below yeah. or even take, let's say you do add it up and you're at 4,000 calories currently, drop it to 3,750. Mm -hmm take 200 off, drop to 3,800, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, and then go from there. So exactly. there's no point. A lot of the time you think that you're on something or your watch might say you're on something because based on my height and weight, I should be eating a lot more calories than I do eat. Mm. But I've got a slow metabolism. Mm. So the thing is I can get away with eating less food. Yep. So everyone's different. It, it, your watch doesn't take into account those kind of things. Mm. Um, as you said, you're very active as well. There's just too many variables for your watch to be getting it correct. But mm. you know what you're eating already, which is correct. So you work that out. Then as Joe said, take 10%, take 200 calories off, depending on where your yep. calories are. Yep. But take 10% off is a good rule mm -hmm. um, and start from there. Absolutely. Devin Foley. Hey guys, Devin from San Jose in the Cali, California, United States. If you had to choose, it's always a choice, Devin. <laughs> Would you rather go vegan or stop training. <laughs> oh, <that's pretty> <coughs> I just drink vegan ghost protein. Fuck. Ghost vegan protein. I, I wouldn't stop training. No, that's ridiculous. I'd probably go vegan. Yeah. But you'd have vegan. That's a shit question, Devin. <laughs> you'd have vegan ghost protein. <laughs> yeah. Five meals a day. Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, fuck. What a, what a, what a horrible, <laughs> do you imagine if you woke up one morning and that was like your choice? <laughs> vegan or stop training? I don't know, I reckon, you can make, I reckon you can make some good vegan meals. Vegan gains? Yeah. I think I just missed the, the old steak. Yeah, 100%. D Walker Fitness. Hey guys, it's Damien from Stoke, not Manchester, in the UK. I remember Damien, I got him on, I got him on fucking Instagram story and I was like, where are you from? And he's like, Manchester. <laughs> and he's like, I'm actually not from Manchester. <coughs> I'm from Stoke. <laughs> Anyway, how you doing, Damien? Hope you're well, brother. Um, my question for you guys is, are there any supplements on the horizon that you are super hyped about? Um, speaking to Axe and Sledge yesterday, Utopia is already here. Um, <laughs> Axe and Sledge, you got a few good products out, coming out. Mm. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a good chat with Mike yesterday, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, he's one of the co-owners of Axon Sledge, so we chatted to yep. him yesterday morning. Yeah. It was uh, night time in Pittsburgh, but mm. it was our morning yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, a few good quality products coming out from Axon Sledge, which I'm looking forward about. Yeah. Um, and also the first form range mm -hmm. is something I'm also looking mm -hmm. forward and pretty hyped about. Um, Doug yeah, no, also I'm, I'm has I'm quite a few products in the works with Core. Core Bolic, Core Greens. Oh, no, I was just gonna say that. Oh, well, fuck it, Core Greens. <laughs> um, yeah, Doug, Doug has got some good shit. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The alphabet, <laughs> alphabet, alphabet aminos. It's got glutamine, <laughs> it's got fish oil. It's got fucking everything. Eggplant. <coughs> everything from A to Z. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I would agree with you. I think uh, I'm, I'm super excited for first form too. Mm. I think it's just going to go fucking nuts. Yeah. Nick James, the name. Hey guys, Nick James from Seattle. No in the United no States one from Australia. of America. I like it. No one from Australia. I like it. Let's go all international weekly word. Yeah. Fuck it. In fact, if you ask a question from Australia <laughs> in the future, you are banned. <laughs> um, thoughts on fish oil and what brand you use and how much you take. I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast and he had a doctor on saying up to five grams of DHA could be beneficial to joint protection and other benefits for your brain. Thoughts. Thanks, guys, and stay massive. I think there's no denying the benefits of fish oil. There's no denying it. So um, the, the issue with fish oil is that price comes down to a big thing. And price for you needs to be one of those alarm bells. Yeah. If you're getting at your local supermarket 500 capsules for 12 bucks, mm -hmm. like it's shit quality. Mm -hmm. Nothing against any of those brands, but fish oil is very expensive because we looked at doing a fish oil at one stage. Yeah. So what, what you want to look at with fish oil is the amount of the omega-3 fatty acids that you are getting per gram of fish oil. So the higher the percentage of omega-3s per gram of fish oil, the higher quality that fish oil is because you're getting omega-3s without, you gotta remember fish oil is fat, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're taking fucking 10 grams of fish oil to get a certain amount of omega-3s that you could get in one gram of a much higher quality extraction method fish oil, you're gonna be better off taking the much higher quality because then you're doing one gram of fat, nine calories to get all of these omega-3s compared to 10 grams of fat, 90 calories to get the same amount. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important thing when it comes to fish fish oil um, is that ratio of omega-3s to actual grams of oil. So when you look at, uh, let's just say Coles or, or Woolworths here in Australia, if you yeah. go to the health food aisle, you see the 300 capsules for 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it's just because, it's, as Joe was saying, those yeah. ratios aren't there and the amounts aren't there per yeah. gram. Yeah. Um, then you go and look at something like core fish oil. Well, Core's, Core's a great example. I've got it on my phone, but I'll get, I'll get Dilip to throw this up on the screen just so you guys can actually see um, what I'm looking at at the moment. So Core is a great example. So in two soft gels, which is two grams, you have 1.3 grams of omega-3. So you're talking 65% of the oil is actually yielding omega-3s in a ratio of EPA to DHA 720 milligrams to 480 milligrams. So that is a super, super high quality fish oil compared to something that you might get at a supermarket where in the same amount you're going to have two grams of fish oil and you might be getting, man, like two, 200 milligrams of omega-3s. Mm. So you're getting literally six times the concentration of the whole point. Because you've got to remember, the whole point of taking fish oils is to get omega-3s. You're not taking fish oil to consume fat. Plenty of other places you can get fat from. Is you're taking it to get omega-3s. Is there much difference between <coughs> like your liquid fish, the liquid fish oil compared to the capsulated fish oils in terms of like the amounts in like a Coles or Worth brand? What do you mean capsulated fish oils? Like the, your soft gels. Yeah. Compared to like a liquid one, is there any difference or is it just... That no, it's just, it's just the delivery method. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it's just the delivery method. And who the fuck wants to actually drink Yeah, it's disgusting. Oil? You always burp it up later. <laughs> Even horrible. like the orange flavour or the orange juice flavour is disgusting. Yeah, it's horrible. Anyway, in terms of dosages, I take two... I take Core Omega, obviously. I take two capsules of Core Omega in the morning and two capsules of Core Omega at night. Mm. So I'm getting a fuck ton of, of Omega-3s. It's mm -hmm. good shit. Last question, of course, is going to our good friend Pierre Pozzuto, aka the Buff Bob Cat. Hey fellas, Pierre here from Chester in the UK with a nice juicy question for you both. Wouldn't expect anything less, Pierre. Mm -hmm. 
I think this has scope for a massive Joe show as it's multifaceted. Further education within the workplace. Where do you stand on this approach? Do you think employees are or should be employed because of their current skill? and should be left to grow and develop by themselves? Or do you believe in taking on staff to then ensure they check in at certain periods of the year for compulsory workshops to improve your way? As the years go by, I see more and more sub companies cashing in on refresher courses and points to give people more credibility. That's huge in the fitness industry. Mm. Um, I fear the individuality is being lost and everyone is cloning a system. Will we ever see another Einstein if all the tracks are being set for us? I would love to be one of the mass, uh, to be on one of the massive Joe shows. Of course, I might even be over in Adelaide sooner than planned if I land this new job role. Oh, Neve has been told. He's been, he did tell me about it. Fuck all right. Hopefully, he does come over. Yeah. Um, Always good to catch up with Pierre. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple ways we can answer this question. Yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, uh, how did Pierre put it, um, workshops, for mm. example, we did a workshop last night with the retail staff. Mm -hmm. So we had the entire retail... The mastery session. We had the entire retail team in last night. Yeah. Um, and Joe, myself, or Joe mainly, but myself, yep. Joe, myself, Leah, um, took the meeting yep. um, and just gave a really a refresher course. Mm. Uh, to most of the team, but also to the new members, just laid it out exactly about how we want the retail stores to be run, mm. how staff, how customers are greeted, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Mm -hmm. um, how they're sold, those kind of things. Yeah, it just the the problem is if you're getting, as you've said, Pierre is getting a, a third party company in. Mm. Is they going to give you what they think works best? Correct. Whereas we've got our company culture, we've got our um, brand. Mm -hmm that we want to push. We, mm -hmm. we don't want to come across as a pushy car salesperson or, mm -hmm. or there's, there's certain ways that, um, I mean, we've been doing, Joe's been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been in our retail stores for seven years. Mm -hmm. So there's a way that I know works and, and that I sell to customers and, and it is not coming across as pushy. It's just coming across as helpful, knowledgeable. Yeah. I think that's probably the main thing. I think upskilling is a, is a must on a personal level mm -hmm. in terms of supplement knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, not just on what the ingredients are, but just as simple as how does this taste or what effects do you feel when you take this? Yeah, which is big on is big on um, In supplements like someone came in for example and asking about utopia and mental jewels mm -hmm. What's the difference between utopia and mental jewels? Mm -hmm. It's easy to give a nutritional panel, but what do you feel? How, mm -hmm. how does it come across? So mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing in the supplement industry as well. Yeah, is not just knowing what the supplements um, do and what the ingredients are mm. But how d how do they have effects on the body? How do you feel when you take it? Yeah? which is obviously what we argue about in stuff like Sup Wars, mm -hmm. because we've used the products mm -hmm. and we know how they both feel. Mm -hmm. um, there's, that's from that side. So we do a lot of um, training in-house mm -hmm. for how Joe wants Massive Joe's to be run, um, how Correct. customers are served, how we, just all, oh, there's, there's if, how emails are answered. I'm a big one on how emails are answered too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I used to be the sales manager, but then um, Josh took it over when he was out there. Mm -hmm. Alex is the warehouse manager now, answers the emails. I'll answer the odd one, but the mm -hmm. thing is, is if I'm emailing, if Josh is emailing, if Alex is emailing, mm -hmm. we want it to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So it needs those things need to be trained, and, and people need to be skilled on their wording and yeah. um, a lot of things. I mean, yeah, there, there's constant training. Mm -hmm. um, probably the biggest thing, I guess, on training is new products, new ingredients mm -hmm. from from a massive Joe's level. Yeah, um, upskilling we do as well, but it is we do a lot of things. It's not just beneficial the articles and information we provide to the customers. They're mm -hmm. also very beneficial to the staff. Correct. So if we do a, an article on what's choline, mm -hmm. all the staff read it as well. Mm -hmm. and it's just a refresher course, just an upskill, uh, an upskill um, practice training. for them. Just is, is, all right, what does choline yeah. do? Yeah. What what what's the clinical dose? What yeah. what products can it be found in if yeah. people ask for choline? Yep. Yeah. Um, that's what we do there. I mean, in terms of. Um, in terms of people's jobs, was the other angle I was going to take it for, Joe, mm -hmm. is, is, is upskilling. Is I'd, I'd, I don't really know too much about upskilling from sort of a business management point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never had any. Mm -hmm. You've never had any. Mm -hmm. um, I think really it comes down to finding someone who's a good, good mentor mm -hmm. um, and also... Some people are just cut out for management or those kind of things, and other people just aren't. Just aren't. Yep. It's part and of their personality, and it's part of their um, core values. 
it's part of their characteristics. And I don't think that if I went to a business management course, yep. I'd really get too much out of it. Yeah. Because I know what works, I know what I'm good at, I know what I'm bad at. Yeah. I have people like you in my life who mm. I can go to and say, look, even even all the time, Joe will give me advice on, all right, you should have done this better. Mm. Um, you should have done that, you shouldn't have done this. Mm -hmm. Good job on that. Because I'm mm -hmm. constantly learning, all right, all right, I need to focus on this, all right, mental note, next time do this. Mm -hmm. Is Yeah, it is con constant upskilling from mentors or, or your bosses or your or management. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's how, personally, I've found best to learn is, is real life situations, yep. getting feedback on things we've done or I've done, yep. how do we improve on that, yep. fail forwards. Yep. So if I've stuffed that up, all right, yep, I didn't completely stuff it up, but I could have done it a lot better next time. Mm. And then that way, next time I go in, I'll know, all right, last time Joe said this, this time I'll, uh, I'll do things differently. So yeah, I think it's, um, for some people in certain situations, definitely upskilling. And the meetings, as I said, we had last night is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. But I think in other certain regards, there's just people that are cut out for management. Mm -hmm. There's people that are cut out for sales. Mm -hmm. And I think if you get someone that's that shit out at sales, I can never be a car salesman. Yep. No matter how many times I go into a car salesman's workshop or watch YouTube videos or watch Jordan Belfort's fucking videos and his, his training, mm -hmm. is I still don't feel comfortable with that hard push. Mm -hmm. And no matter what training I do, nothing's going to change that. Deep mm -hmm. down, I'm not going to be a good pushy salesperson. Yep. I hate standing in the middle, of, I would never be able to stand in the middle of like a shopping center giving out brochures because I hate that. Mm -hmm. No matter what I do or watch or go to courses, I'll never be good at that because I don't like it. Yep. Long-winded answer, but that's my answer. Good fucking answer. I'm impressed. Mm. Big Neve. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No. Before I tell the viewers <coughs> to hit the subscribe button, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to turn your post notifications on both on your mobile, your cell phone, and your desktop PC so you don't miss a beat when it comes to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel. Guys, that is Massive Joe's Weekly Word, episode 158, and that's a wrap. Until next week. What time is it? MassiveJoe's.com. <laughs> so don't be time, baby. We'll come to it from Neve. MassiveJoe's.com. Thank you for tuning in to this video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to check out our latest upload and our recommended video and be sure to subscribe to the Massive Joe's YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our latest uploads.